it's easy to transition to parallel pedagogy where we learn the concepts simultaneously. We think most instructors would agree the best way to go about solving problems is by identifying and developing the underlying concepts. And yet we think that most classes train students to formula hunt because we teach the concepts one at a time and we grade the students on the answer and we count their homework toward their final grade. Thus, in optimizing their time, students will often strategically bypass the conceptual development in favor of finding the formula, putting the numbers in, and getting the answer. And so how do we do it differently? If we really value concept development, we would introduce the concept simultaneously, conservation momentum, energy, dynamics, and motion, and then we build in the complexity reviewing the concepts with every additional step. Homework doesn't count toward the final grade. We use weekly assessments and we grade largely on conceptual development. So when students do the homework, they're not just trying to get an answer, they're trying to learn the material. This is a rough model of a 10-week curriculum. I draw your attention to week 10. This is when we introduce trigonometry and these two kinematic formulas that students often use without fully understanding them. And so at the very beginning, we introduce the four concepts with no math, trig, or vectors. And then in the subsequent weeks, we develop the one-dimensional vectors initially, units, and we use examples of springs, friction, and ballistic pendulum, which is extra cool because it has two concepts involved, conservation of energy and momentum in a collision. And we have them do a video project. The students take a video of themselves doing something strenuous so they can use the video to get the kinematics and calculate the power. So for instance, we want to throw a heavy ball into the air. Software can extract the position versus time data, and from this we can calculate the velocity and the acceleration. From the velocity, we can calculate the kinetic energy, and from the position, we can calculate the potential energy. We can add these two together to get the total mechanical energy of the system, and what we see is when the ball is in the air, the total energy is largely constant, but at a lower level for each subsequent bounce. Work is done on the system when he's throwing it into the air. And so the power is going to be the slope of this line where we see the ball gains approximately 100 joules of energy in half a second for a power of approximately 200 watts. We can also analyze the forces with the free body diagram. And so after this, we repeat the same process but with rotation. And in week five, we look at central forces, including centripetal acceleration and universal gravity. In six, we can look at systems of masses, in week seven and eight, we repeat the analysis again, but for two dimensions, but without trigonometry, so students get an idea of how to visually estimate components. In week nine, we look at more advanced topics, like precession and gyroscopic stabilization. And in week 10, we draw it all together and allow students to use trigonometry and to use these larger kinematic formulas. So how do we grade our conceptual development? For instance, the example, of a car coming around an off-ramp on a slippery road. A student may remember the formula, put the numbers in, and get the correct answer. For our assessments, this would earn them an F. However, if they first identify this is a dynamics problem because forces are causing acceleration, they would get a D. And if they recognize this acceleration was centripetal acceleration oriented inward, and this acceleration is a result of the sum of the forces subsequently identifying the forces in a free body diagram and adding them to get the result in force, they would get a C because it's in the wrong direction. But if they furthermore recognized the acceleration must be in the same direction as the sum of the forces, they would get a B. Lastly, if they were able to estimate what the sum of the forces were and substitute in the right values to get the correct answer, they would get an A. We have constant feedback with short weekly assessments that allow students to check on their progress and allow us to grade the assessments before the next class period, providing quick feedback. For one class, I administered the CLAS before and after. We see a small improvement, both in a decrease in unfavorable associations and an increase in favorable, which is good because introductory classes often result in the opposite. The greatest improvement was in applied conceptual understanding.
Hey, thanks, Pete, uh, for this opportunity to just briefly tell everyone about my experience in adopting parallel pedagogy. I would just say that um, knowing that the way we've always taught physics hasn't always worked for everyone. It was uh, something that interested me to look at other alternatives and parallel pedagogy was uh, the one I gave it a try. Um, and I have to say that it was my first time teaching intro mechanics and it was way more fun than I expected it to be. So I'm really grateful for that. Uh, I'll just briefly say that what I really like about the parallel pedagogy method is that we get the students to think uh, first and foremost about the problem they're trying to solve and then ask what concepts and what assumptions they need to make in order to attack that problem. And I think this gets them thinking in a higher level way about the problems they're trying to solve and um, kind of gets them out of the box of uh, kind of focusing on concepts in isolation. And they really get to think about the, the interconnections between these by building their uh, experience over time. And so my uh, experience doing this uh, sort of was um, even in the first week of the quarter, uh, very interesting. I had to, we posed a, pre, a question to the students, what happens to your stopping distance if you double your speed? And um, when the students uh, thought about this for a little while and then tried to answer it, um, what they said was that they didn't have enough information their physics tutor told them it wasn't a solvable problem. And that really got me thinking, why are they coming at it from that perspective? And I realized that they were attacking it in sort of a serial pedagogy approach, uh, looking up their formula sheet, finding a formula that relates position and velocity, realizing they don't have the time or they don't have the acceleration, and then stopping and saying, I don't know how to do this. Uh, there's not enough information. And in the parallel pedagogy method, when we talked about this problem and considered what if we look at it from uh, the multi perspectives that we have, uh, some of the students were able to recognize, ah, I have a change in kinetic energy, it's connected to the work, and I can use that to find the initial speed because I know that the object is coming to rest. Um, they, of course, had to make an assumption that the force is the same in both cases in order to construct the ratio and, and see what happens. Um, but for the students that were able to uh, grasp this, I think it helped them see that by looking at problems from multiple perspectives simultaneously, you can often get past a stumbling block. And so that was just uh, one experience of, of doing this. And I look forward to uh, the next opportunity I have to teach it with Pete. Uh, I'll let him take it back. Now, thanks. For virtual instruction, we have all the resources that you need to get started. We have a free online textbook, conceptual, algebra based, and calculus based, and you can assign them via perusal if you want to monitor the participation. We also have about 100 YouTube videos that you can have the students watch through PlayPosit, a web platform that allows the students to watch the videos while you ask them questions and record their participation. We also see that if I lock the gyroscope by tying it with strings, preventing it from changing orientation, it's very easy to turn again. Number one's not right, but number two is correct. So I submit, oh, I forgot. Number three is also correct, that if I cut the strings, Also, you have access to past classes that we've had with all the exams, solutions, etc., and you can join our learning community. For instance, Dean Stoker is a professor at Blue Ash College in the University of Cincinnati. He adopted parallel pedagogy and found it was a smooth transition, improved student learning, and it was enjoyable. Furthermore, his class was conceptual physics, so he adopted the parallel pedagogy to a conceptual program and wrote his own textbook which we also provide. So even though we're just getting started, this already looks like a good transition. The data indicate the students are learning better. The survey results indicate they prefer this method. We have all the resources we need, and we're looking forward to collaborating with you. Thank you.